tonight. Paul O'Grady back on our screen showing us around his adopted home of the County of Kent. Well, this has certainly been a lousy year. What do you think? My sentiments entirely. We've all been staying as close to home as possible. So I've been having a mooch around my own patch of beautiful Britain. There we go. <laughs> Just magnificent. No, not my Birkenhead. No man and rabbits. Good boy. But beautiful Kent. Oh, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? And Paul joins me now. Hello, gorgeous. How are you? Hi, Lorraine. How are you doing? I'm absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. And that looks so beautiful. And it's great. You, you were able to do a documentary about your home, where you, where you live now, which is rather lovely. Well, this is it, you, you know, because like a lot of people, I had, um, I had loads scuppered this year. You know, I had loads of jobs on and they, of course, they were all cancelled for various reasons. So um, we decided to go around Kent and have a look at Kent because I've been living here now for over 20 years. And it really is a beautiful place to live. You know, it's, if you like the countryside, Kent's the place. It's, it's just gorgeous. So I had a good time, you know, I went up in the Tiger Moth and did all that business and fired a gun and all sorts. That must have been incredible on a Tiger Moth, especially on a day like today, to be up in a Tiger Moth and actually to see the White Cliffs of Dover, to see all of that. Look at that. That is astonishing. Was that great fun? It was. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, you know, especially when the plane went, you know, to the side and then the other <laughs> It was sure, yeah, it was great. And to see the White Cliffs of Dover, you know, from up there, it's, it's quite a sight. You know, wow. it really is. That is amazing. I sort of got a bit emotional. Yeah, but, oh. I know, I bet. <laughs> no, I can completely understand that. Now, how is life on the farm? Because you've got a fair few animals, including, I love this, you've got owls. I have. Yeah, I've got barn owls. I was, um, we rescued a barn owl and then uh, we built a big aviary. And then somebody gave me a barn owl, another rescue barn owl. It was a male. And, of course, the inevitable happened. Right. And then I ended up with six. And it's a bit like Hogwarts down here now. There's <laughs> owls all over the place. I mean, really. You <laughs> but they are beautiful that. animals. And they're also, they're also endangered, you know, because the habitat's it's... gone. Pesticides are killing them. They're flying into lorries. Of course, when they get wet, they can't fly. So, um, yeah, I've got my own little um, owl breeding sanctuary. I love that. And I love that somebody knocked on your door and, and gave you an owl. I mean, that's not going to happen to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. I, it's just lovely. Lorraine, I have a bizarre life. You know, I've it's had a, people not, I've it's had a farmers great knock on the door with, life, a, with, with a lamb saying, <laughs> do you want this lamb? It's an orphan. And, and I say, oh, I haven't really got time. And they go, go on. And I, so, of course, I take it. And the next thing, I've got a lamb running around the kitchen with the dogs who I'm hand reading. But it's great fun. I mean, I love hand reading animals. It's oh, just it's fabulous. Oh, it's wonderful. The thing about you is, though, you can't say no. We see this all the time, no. you know, on, on, the, on that beautiful, beautiful show about dogs that you do. Um, and it's just, you just see, you, you, look, there you are. They give you a little puppy and how can you say no? I can't. This is it. It's dreadful. You know, it's just shocking. It really is. I mean, look at that. How could you resist? You, you know, can't. I look straight in the coat. Here we go. If I, here's a Battersea boy. This is Eddie. Hi, Eddie's, Eddie. I think it's... Hey, Ed. <laughs> you on the telly? Yeah. Eddie's got a bit of weight on him at the moment, so he's on a strict diet. Oh. But he's a Battersea boy, aren't you? Hey? Oh, he's gorgeous. He's, <laughs> he's got... looking at me like I'm mad. He's thinking, <laughs> what are you doing up at this hour of the morning? <laughs> Look, it's just because we're on the rain, that's why. We have to get up, yeah. We're causing chaos <laughs> in the family. How many wee dogs have you got now? Do you know? <laughs> I've got four at the moment. I lost four. one during lockdown. Aww. He was, uh, I mean, I was lucky. I had him for five years because he was severely epileptic. I mean, it's one so... of the worst cases the vet had ever seen. Aww. Boise, there he is. Beautiful. So he was on loads of medication. And I'm afraid the last sort of cluster of seizures he had, you know, it just sort of finished him, really. Goodness and, of course, goodness. all the medication did damage to his kidneys as well. Aww. So the inevitable happens. And I'll, I'll tell you what, Lorraine, I, he was, because he was so vulnerable, I had a real soft spot for him. I was in pieces when off he went to the vet. I mean, literally, that was the worst thing for me in lockdown. It was dreadful. Oh, that's really hard. It, it, it's really hard because yeah. they're, they're like our children. They're part of the family and they become such a huge part of the family. Um, I, you know, I've, I've got little Angus and on the very rare occasions if I come home and he's not there, maybe Steve's taking him out for a walk or something, the house is dead. You know, it's know, just like so quiet and it doesn't feel right. 
Well, I'm used to this pitter, pitter, patter, pitter, patter, you know, when I'm walking around because they all follow me. Oh. So wherever I go, I can go to the loo. They're all staring at me. <laughs> I can get in the shower. Nancy gets in with me. I think, is there any peace? Is there anywhere where I can go? Oh, <laughs> like, baby Nancy. She's and so they freak me out. <laughs> I love yeah, that they just Nancy fall. when she was a puppy. Oh, this, yeah. it's great. And I love your show. And you're going to be doing more of those, aren't you, when we're allowed? More of the shows about dogs. Oh, well, uh, with the dogs. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, you know, I'm desperate to get back in there. Yeah, very much so. But you'll probably end up having, like, four more puppies, no doubt, knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what will happen. Paul, tell me this. Tell me about your cabinet of curiosities. Because um, my, my gran used to have a cabinet of curiosities, and I love this oh, well, idea. It's wonderful. Well, again, it was during lockdown. Uh, my friend Jane Tunnycliffe, she's very clever. She can do anything. She's an actor. She can play all sorts. And she made a cabinet of curiosities, and I thought... Well, there's enough junk knocking around my place here. I'm sure I can make one. So I did. So, and you just, it's just, you, you get off the internet, you know, your cabinet, and then you paint it to make it look old. And then you shovel bits of tat you found in drawers, and there you go. And there's the cabinet of curiosities. I love As that. my mother would say, a load of old muck, dust arbiters, get rid of it. <laughs> but it's great. It's such a good, I think everybody should have a cabinet of curiosity somewhere. Because you know how you've got things that are really, they don't, there's no value to the money value kind of thing, but they're very important to you. Um, and it's just a place where you can where you can keep them on instead of them being shoved in drawers. It's such a good idea. I, I know, just, you know, all your bits of tat, just put it in a box and stick it on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's absolutely brilliant. I really do. Now, I will, I will never forget, it must be now, for goodness sake, Paul, it's 11 years ago now, when I turned 50, and you came and did the show. I was sitting on the sofa. I had no idea who it was going to be. And I was so thrilled <laughs> that it was you. Can you believe that's 11 years ago? Crazy. Was that 11 years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Is that oh, that's right. I was supposed to be the stripper. <laughs> <laughs> but you stopped. They didn't have much money in the budget, so they got me. <laughs> no, it was, was great. Cheap. It was such a lovely, lovely day. It really was. It was fantastic. <laughs> I enjoyed every single minute of it. And you were so kind. And it just, it was just fun. You know, that's the thing. And you, I just think you've got, you've got it sorted. You've got a lovely, lovely life at home in the farm, which is, I mean, it must be good for the soul when you just go outside and all that beautiful, all the animals are there, the scenery's gorgeous. It's just lovely. I, I, hang on a minute, Rain. <laughs> Don't forget, gale force winds. Right. Uh, the electricity goes off. <laughs> The internet is possibly the worst on the planet. If I want to use my mobile phone, I have to go to obscure places like the hen house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. So there's all, there's all that type of thing you have to deal with. You that know is what I mean? very but true. It is. It really is. You know, I just, I, I, lo I love the countryside and I love living in Kent. And um, yeah, it is. It's, it's a, a real treat. And especially in lockdown, you know, I really realised just how lucky I was. Exactly. Having a big garden, you know, and fields I could go mooching around. And there was always something I could do. You know, so I wasn't... Sure. I learned to play the ukulele. Would you believe that? Did you? I had ukulele lessons online. <laughs> and that's not a euphemism. You actually did learn to play the ukulele. <laughs> I did. I've sat there at my ukulele up with me tutor and I'm going... Hard-hearted <laughs> Hannah, the vamp of Savannah. All the dogs cleared because he's now finally lost it. So, so, so I did lots of it. I, did, I wrote a kids' book in lockdown. I made jam and chutney. I can't tell you the things I did. Cleared the house house. I've got yeah. no clothes left because you know you get a bit over enthusiastic you when you're having a clear house. You I'll do. never wear that again. You see, I've not no. worn that for a while. I'll get rid of it. You are fantastic. Yes. Thank you so, so much for joining us this morning. Um, I know you're not going to be doing panto this year because of everything, but next year will be bigger and better. Bigger and better next year, that's for sure. For sure. I hope so, Lorraine. Yeah, Definitely. I hope so. Definitely. Yeah. And, and so, so good to see you. I'm looking forward to the show tonight. Ah, you. Yeah, Great British Escape. It's on tonight, 8 o'clock on ITV. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.